Thanks again for tuning back into the channel and thank you so much for the support in the last few videos that I've done. Your support is wonderful. I absolutely love that you're enjoying these types of videos. This week it is slightly longer, although I said I was going to make them shorter, but I've made a difference in this week's video. If you go to the description below, you'll find all the files in a folder. Just download them and you can follow along with this video if you want and create your own images from it. I just thought that would be helpful for some people that are just learning Photoshop and others that may be looking for images to use to try any of these techniques. So they're down below in the description. Help yourself, they're free to use, do whatever you want with them. Let's get on with this week's tutorial. This is us in Photoshop. So the first thing is File, New. And we are looking for a custom file, which is 210 by 297. And if you don't have this up in the screen, if you go into Print, you will notice the A4 is 210 by 297. And we want a vertical orientation with this, 300 pixels per inch. For this exercise, I'm just going to work in 8-bit. And then click Create. You'll notice here, I've got this in a different screen, but this is the folder if you want to follow along that you can download. And there's just an example image there to let you see what you're heading towards. But we're going to bring all this in in a certain sequence, which as you know in Photoshop, you can move around. So the first thing we're going to do is just drag from the folder and drop it in top. And you can see that that's the inks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that and scale it up slightly until it reaches there and then click OK. So that one there is already named Inks. The next one we're going to bring in is the woman. And you can see that there. Again, we're going to scale this up. And that one's already named for you as well. These are coming in as smart objects and we don't actually need them as smart objects. So what you can do is you can just right click on this and rasterize layer and right click on this and rasterize layer. I'll create another video about smart objects and why you actually should use them. But for this example, we don't need it. So what we're going to do with this is we're just going to simply copy this up and it's command and J. So we've got a copy of the woman, which we're going to turn off. So we'll turn the woman layer off and we'll turn the background layer off. And you'll notice that this is a PNG already set up for you as well. So what we're going to do is go to the woman layer, get into a blending mode, and let's go for screen. So straight away, you can see that with a screen blend, the woman layer blends into the inks. And everything outside of that, like this area here and this area down here, disappears. And that's just to do simply to do with the screen blending mode. Next thing to do, turn on the woman copy. Now, if you want, you can make this a screen blending mode so that you can see what you're doing. And I've changed that one to screen blending mode. You'll notice if I flick it on and off, it just gets slightly lighter, the entire image. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to scale this up. So if you go Command and T which is free transform, and then just grab one of the handles and place that wherever you want on the screen. I am going to go for about there, just roughly there, so that I can see that eye and I can see this eye here. I've noticed the stuff going on here. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. So then once you've done that, click OK. Next thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a mask in this layer and that will deal with this. So if you go down and just click the mask button and you'll notice that the reveal all mask appears. But what we want, we want an, a hide all mask in here. So the easy way to do that, if you've only clicked the mask button, is click on the mask itself, this white border shows you that you're clicked on the mask. You'll see if I jump across to here, the white border goes around the woman. Take it back to the mask, press Control or Command and I creates a hide all mask, meaning we have to paint in what we want to see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a brush, 
soft round. I'm going to take it up to 100% for this. So we'll take it up to 100% and the foes at 100% because it's a black mask I need to paint in white. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush size up and that's just the square brackets on the keyboard. I know the woman was around there, so I'm just going to paint her in. Now at points, this may bleed onto your other image. So I'll just show you what you can do with this as well. So we've got that so far. If I want to remove some areas, I just press X in my keyboard, which changes this. And then just go in and paint out the areas that I don't want. You'll notice I'm actually not painting on here. And that's simply because the feather of the brush extends out further. So I know that if I paint here, I can gently eat into the image that I've just created. Again, I want to come back into this. I could make the brush smaller and then drop the opacity and then paint in white and just paint back in. So it's up to you how you do this. You'll find your own way of becoming comfortable with blending. So we're not too far from a finish point at the moment, which just shows you how quickly and easily all this can be done. What we're going to do now is we are going to bring in another layer. So even with this top layer selected, we're going to bring in vintage paper. And we're going to drop that on. And this is going to be scaled up to here and just click OK. Now, I don't want it. Again, it's a smart object. I can change it from a smart object just now and just click rasterize layer. But I don't want it in the top layer. So you simply grab the layer and drag it down behind. And we have this effect. So you'll notice that the writing is appearing through and you can still see what we've just done. Some extra bits have been added to it. So indeed, you may think that's exactly what I want. But again, I'm going to take it a little bit further. It's a nice effect as it is. And as a finished image, yes, that would work. But I'm going to take it a little bit further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and see what blending modes would best suit the background. Now, I've got a video coming up soon on these blending modes, but I'm just going to cycle through them just now because I feel that that is the best way to see how it's going to work with all your images. So we can get in here for difference, exclusion, subtract, divide, hue, saturation, color, luminosity. So you get through these till you get the one that you are most happiest with. And for me, I think it's going to be darkened. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn the opacity of it down a bit. Just a bit there. I want to be able to see that there is writing there, but not too much that it takes over the entire image. On this layer, another thing we're going to do is we're going to add a mask to this one. And that's how it's got a reveal all mask. Now, we're going to edit this mask slightly differently. And that's because of one of the effects that we're going to be adding at the end. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go in sometimes, or most of the time, the default position of this tool here is the paint bucket tool. But you'll notice the arrows at the side. If you just hover over them and hold down, you'll get the gradient tool. And then up the top, the controls for the gradient tool. In my case, I've went into basics and I've taken the middle one of the basics and you can see that it's black there. If I click down here and change it to white, you'll see it's white, but I'm going to take it back to black. So we've got that and we're choosing this one. I also want it to be the linear gradient. And I'm going to start round about here, click and then start to move my mouse towards the top of the image, but at the same time, I'm holding down shift. And all that shift does is it locks it. You can see that it's actually locking in certain angles. So shift actually locks this to certain angles. So I'm going to pull that up there. I'm going to leave mine there. Three more things to do and then you're finished this image, but please be creative for yourself using these images and see what you come up with. With this layer, We've got this color in here and you may not want this color. So what you can do is you can select the layer, go to adjustments, go into hue saturation, and before you do anything, click that there. That means it eclipses to only affecting the layer below it. So if I do this, 
let me show you. If I take that down, you'll notice that all the color changes. But if I click this, it only clips to the actual ink layer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, I'm going to take that back to the zero. And you can type in these. And then I'm going to get, cycle through the colors to see what one I like and what effects there. But on top of that, again, we can make this a uniform effect. And we can click colorize. And you notice it's now a uniform effect. So you can then cycle back through. So it's down to you what you think is going to work best for your images. I quite like this one. So I'm going to sit around there just for the purposes of this. Two more things to do now and then the image is finished. The first one for me is this layer here. I'm going to go back down to the woman layer. Now you'll notice that I have rulers up at the top here. If you, want, if you don't have rulers showing, press Control or Command and R and the rulers will show. I also want anything I do with these rulers to snap as well. So if I go into View and you'll see down here, Snap is turned on. You can tell that it is because I've run through this once before. So I've got Snap turned on. Now, if I go over to these rulers, if I click in the top and drag down, I've got a guide. And these guides, they don't print, they're just a guide for working with. And to remove them, I just take them back up to the top. But what I want to do is I want to put a guide at both sides, both edges of these eyes for the effect that I'm after. You do not have to do this. So I'm going to take one across. I'm clicking and dragging. I'm going to take another one across. Again, clicking and dragging. Another one to this eye, and it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just going for the effect that I'm after, and another one to this eye. So I've now got these four lines in here, which I am going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And because we've got snap on, if I start in that line and just drag down, it snaps to the line. But I want the second one selected as well. So what I can do is if I hold down shift, I'll try and place this where you can see it. If you look at the cursor and I hold down shift, I get the plus sign. Meaning that I can now go in still holding down shift and draw another one here. And I'm only doing this so that I don't have to do it twice. So if I go like that and it snaps, you'll see the color change. It's not going to be perfect, but there we go. So I've got that and that. These two rectangular marquees are on this layer I'm, and they're selecting certain elements within this layer. In this case, it's two stripes running through the eyes. So if I press Command and J, I get these two stripes, which I can take to the top if I wish. And you can see that there, they're slightly lighter as well because this layer here has got a screen blend on it. That layer there has got a screen blend on it. We can adjust that later. Now I want to hide these guides. So for the purposes of this one, I'm just going to click the Move tool and drag them off, just so that you can see what's happening. Drag them away, gone. Now, you can see there, if I flick that on and off, it's you may prefer the image like that, you may prefer the image like this, but you, using your own creativity, do what you want with this. I'm just showing you certain techniques to be able to manipulate your images further. So we're nearly finished. The image looks great so far, if that's the kind of thing you like as well. I do, I quite like this. So I'm just going to bring in the dancer layer and I'm dragging and dropping the dancer layer on. And I'm going to put the dancer layer roughly around here. Just roughly about there. Now it doesn't have to be centralised or anything. I'm just going to place her about there just now. And you'll see that again, smart object. It doesn't matter if you leave it as a smart object in this case. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to rasterize the layer. So right now we have this effect. For me, I don't want the inks showing here. So a couple of ways we could hide them. I'm going to show you the simplest and quickest way to hide it. The dancer layer is above the second woman layer, which is this one here. If I just click the woman copy layer and then press that button there, which is layers, this creates a new blank layer for me. Now, the simplest way to hide all this so that I'm not destroying the document is get into the brush, making sure it's white. Now, I've clicked that and I'm now going to click on here because I want to match the color. 
and it is, it is pure white. So I'm going to take the brush, and in this case, the brush size is 250, and I'm simply going to paint it out. And if it does, as you saw there, if it bleeds onto that, you can use the eraser tool, paint out some, like so, and leave it like that. So for me, that's that image complete. I'm not going to add anything to it, but for the fact that you can now go in and adjust any elements within this, you've created, I'll just maximize this if you just press F in your keyboard twice, and then Command and Zero, that's your final image, similar to the image that you saw at the beginning of the, uh, the video. Press F again and it goes back into the working screen of Photoshop. But you can go in and edit any of this at all. I could get back into the hue adjustment layer if I don't think I like that purple too much. Let's make it another color. Let's go for green, reds, whatever you want. So that's you. Just in a few simple and quick steps, you've used masks, you've used the snap tool and the rectangular tool to copy from layers, you've blended layers together, and you've created a really nice image in a very short space of time. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully with the files being there, it allows you to follow along as well if you want to do that or if you just want to try something for yourself. If you do use any of these files, please feel free to tag me in it because I love to see people's creativity. If you tag me in Instagram and it's Gary McIntyre Photographer and Instagram, I would love to see what you create with some of these images. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.